BGF was started over 35 years ago. As Bobby was diagnosed and uh, contracted uh, uh, HIV and then became sick, his friends and family got together and realised that he wasn't getting the right support in the hospital setting and they really wanted him to be at home uh, and be supported by friends and family. So after Bobby's passing, um, the friends and the family realised that actually a whole lot of other people needed that support. So that, that's how the organisation was founded. So it was built very much from friends and the community, getting together, realising that our folks needed that support. Practical, emotional and financial support. But over time, it's, it's grown into a lot, a lot more what's called psychosocial support. So more of the emotional side of stuff. Uh, helping. So what we do today, we still do the practical stuff. So we go and do, go to people's homes and do the hands-on stuff. You know, help them with uh, their household duties, take them to appointments, um, take them on an outing because they haven't gone to see the beach for a long time. And then in terms of the emotional things, you know, there's a, a people who are living with HIV that we work with are at the pointy end. So they've got a whole lot of other challenges in their life where they may have other conditions that they need treatment for. So there's a whole health system to navigate, financial system to navigate, um, poverty to manage, uh, budgeting, I mean, it kind of carries on and on. So that's the psychosocial side. We also still offer financial assistance. So a lot of charities out there won't give out ongoing financial support, whereas we still do. We still have some folks that we've been probably supporting them for the last 15 years um, especially around their medications. So, you know, if um, uh, through their HIV they might have contracted a, or they might have got another um, condition that might have something to do with their liver or so, so on, we will help them to pay for that medication, for example. So that's just some of the examples. Once upon a time when Bobby Goldsmith Foundation was founded, it was founded by the gay community and the prime candidate was the gay community. Um, however, over time that's changed and also with our new rebrand, if you go to our website, you'll notice that we actually, anybody that's living with HIV and their uh, friends and family can come and talk to us, come and see us. We really, we've all, that's been for years, however with the rebrand we've finally kind of come to a point that we can actually really showcase that. I'd say 80% of our clients are from the LGBTIQA plus community. Um, but uh, slowly but surely we are reaching out to more uh, people out there. Especially with the image being changed a little bit. At forefront we used to have Bobby, which is, uh, you know, a gay white male. Um, so that image has changed. So we still keep the body, Bobby Goldsmith uh, logo, but we are open to all. Sometimes, uh, coming from an ethnic background myself, uh, uh, I believe the um, the proof is in the pudding, in the, so in the way that uh, what we have been doing actively, especially since I've, since I've started, is recruit staff that are, come from a variety of cultures and backgrounds, so that they themselves, uh, it identifies and shows BJ for the different face that, and that it is. Because we're not, we're not, if you walk through around the office, you would know that we're not all just white males or something like that, or white women, excuse me. Um, but so there is a, a real variety in the staff, hoping that that will also bring, uh, showcase that we are uh, a very diverse and open organisation. Um, it's ongoing work, especially I think Indigenous uh, communities have struggled a lot in Australia, so they. Uh, my my wish and hope is for us to have original staff, but it's always going. We have to do a lot more work internally to be culturally aware, in order to bring someone like that on board. It's kind of like a a little bit of a forgotten cause. People still live in poverty. People still have mental health issues. People still have other life challenges. The idea is that uh, everyone's doing fine, so why, why worry about it? So it is changing our perception because, uh, you know, you mentioned that word, you know, are people still scared of the three-letter word? They bloody are, you know. You, they might pretend that they're not, but, you know, peop I know that people won't um, talk about it or go down that way or if I mention, well, I'm, you know, and I'm quite open, if I'm in a bar or if I'm in a, a restaurant and I'll talk about HIV, and, you know, you can see that people around you kind of uh, straighten up a little bit because, 
you know, what, what's, what's that conversation about? So it's, it's still a scary word in the community, um, but we kind of want to pretend like it's not there. Mm. So we're challenging that.